What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video and today I'm bringing you the Firmino poster that I created the other night. A lot of you guys gave me a lot of feedback and asking if I could do a tutorial on this because you like the poster design so much so that is what I'm going to do and today I'm going to leave the poster PSD file in the link so you guys can download the poster. Now I'm going to take the Firmino images probably out or I'll just turn them off so you can use this background for any player you want. Just a giveaway that I'm going to do this, this time because I've hit hit 400 subs that was my goal for Christmas and you guys have helped me to get to that so it's gonna be a PSD file with the uh the poster design in the bottom and I'm gonna leave all the textures as well so you can design it yourself if you want to learn but if you just want the PSD file then I'm gonna leave it in the link below okay so I hope you guys are ready for this video and excited because I am uh yeah there's gonna be a bit of type manipulation a bit of image manipulation and yeah layer masks stuff we know and stuff we're used to by now if you've watched my tutorials so hopefully you are um yeah thanks for all the support on the instagram lots of followers now make sure you click the link below and go follow the instagram because that's where i upload all my imagery and all my designs that i make and then you'll get a better feel of what videos are coming and what to look out for so um yeah thank you for the support on the kobe bryant video uh that was something a bit different from football posters but i just thought uh, it's, it'd be nice to try something new so uh, thank you for all the support on that guys and yeah that's about it so let's get straight into the video all right guys so first thing we're going to need to do is get our file and the file size that we need so if you go to file new this is going to be a new document. Now, I've got mine set up as Instagram. You guys will just need to set up yourself. Change your pixels, and then you're going to go 1080 by 1350. So this is the standard size for um, uploading on Instagram. This is the size I use for my poster designs because it's easier and it fits most social media pages. So if you do that, and then 300 resolution for best quality, and then click OK. Right, so we have our poster uh, background. So the first thing we are going to do is create some shapes. Now, this might sound a little bit silly to you, but we need shapes to actually make sure this poster works. What we're gonna do is get our rectangle tool down here on the left. So if we get a rectangle tool, and then we're just gonna drag a shape out. So make sure it fills pretty much the whole whole width and you're going to want to choose some reds different reds so i've got a swatch panel up here called Firmino. probably won't be able to see it because my face will be in the way but i'll try and show you it on a on a quick screenshot um and it's got all these different reds in for me so what i'm going to do is layer these shapes up so if you watch as i go along so what i'm going to do is tilt them on an angle and then i'm just going to drag and make sure they fit the whole of the shape or, or whole of the page sorry so like that so there's our first one now what i'm going to do is duplicate this and then I'm just going to change the color to a darker red and then what I'm going to do is uh, move it in a bit and then choose another different color red and then again and again and basically I'm going to do this until we get a nice nice looking background because uh, we don't we want to make sure that um, this design looks looks different you got to make sure it's different reds otherwise it, it just won't look right so what we're going to do is make sure we offset these shapes so they're in different layers um again and we can move different ones above if we want certain ones to show more than others and what we're going to do is add drop shadows to these so basically you're going to be able to see the layering up that we've done so if i just double click on this rectangle that i move to the top here and just click do uh, drop shadow now you can see that it's actually layered above so this is the sort of effect I'm going with with this design. Uh, it, it's very easy to achieve. You just need to pick different reds. Now I can I can show you the uh, colors that I've gone with if you would like. Uh, I'll show you the hex codes just now. So that's that's pretty much how we are doing this design basically. Uh, it's, it's really not that complicated. Pretty simple. It's a nice nice red background like so. As you can see, it look it looks really nice, doesn't it? So uh, if you want to move certain ones up so i'm going to move probably about three up um design ladder i'm going to do this one i add a slight drop shadow to that one now you don't have to add the drop shadow but if you feel like it would look better then add the drop shadow uh, and then i'm going to add a drop shadow here and then you're just going to make sure you move it above like so like something like that now you can change the colors of these if you think they they, they don't like it the images don't like mesh right um but that's complete personal preference to be honest so something like that that looks good really um we've got our shapes layered up now it wasn't that hard i just made one shape rotated it 45 degrees and then started duplicating it to make a background so that's pretty much all you need to do for this now the next thing you need to do is choose your rectangles that you want to rasterize now rasterizing means that we can make them a selection um so i'm going to choose this one this one 
this one and this one so I've chosen four across now if you've got the same sort of shape layout as me you'll be able to do this as well so if you select these and then go right click and rasterize layers now they will all be rasterized so the ones with, that are rasterized won't have this little square in the bottom right of the image so you'll know which ones are rasterized so that's all we need to do for that for now now we need to drop the Anfield image in but we can group our shapes together first so I'm just going to group them together and now we just need to go get our imagery so these images will be in the texture pack below that I'm going to link below so you download that and you'll have all the images so I'm just going to go get that and I'll be straight back okay guys so I've got my Anfield image now I've already made it black and white because it, it just looks better for the design. So you will have this black and white in the texture pack so you don't need to worry about that. The only thing you need to do for this image is go to your blending options and change it to darker color and then reduce the opacity down to 50%. Now that looks good, doesn't it? You can see all the images through the image and you can see all the shapes. It all looks good. Right, so we've got that done. And the next thing we're gonna to need to do is do some type. So what we're gonna get is our text tool. We're gonna to put our type up to 22 points and we're gonna get the font poppins. Now, what I'm gonna do is just type Firmino. Now you want this in a white font uh, so that it looks right. And then you're gonna to wanna to position this dead center in the design, somewhere like that looks good to me. And make sure it's moved to the top. And then what we're gonna do is just duplicate this down. So you can have about a 10 centimeter gap between them or nine, it really is, it's not too important. But as long as they cover the whole page, that's what we're looking for. So if I do that again, now that looks good. Now if I select them all, now you can move them up if you want them to fit exactly like so. That looks really good. Now what we're gonna do is group them together and call them a text layer. Right. Now we are using our rasterized shapes. So what we need to do with the text is basically layer mask them into the, into the shapes. So if we go down to our shapes layer and we just select different shapes, uh, we're gonna be able to load a selection. So if we go to select the first one that's been rasterized, then go down to select and load selection and click OK. As you can see, we've got our little ants treading along the screen and now that bit is selected. So what we need to do is select the text layer and click layer mask. As you can see, it's cut out that bit of font. That's perfect. So now what we're gonna do is select our next layer and then we're gonna do the same process again, load selection. Now we've got that one selected and then we're gonna go back to our layer mask and then we're gonna get a brush tool, make sure it's a soft brush it uh, doesn't really matter what size and make sure you've got the white color selected and then you can just paint back in within that selection like so see what I mean now we got just going to do this for the last the last two now so I'm just going to quickly run through this load selection got this one down here and make sure you've selected the layer and like that really simple as you guys can see now I'm just going to select my last rasterized layer which is somewhere down here uh, load selection like so go back to our layer mask layer and there we go there's the text pretty simple as you can see so now just deselect that now I've got a text layer in the background pretty simple all you need to do now is add some texture so what we, I'm gonna go get my imagery now and then I'll be right back right guys so you're gonna want to get texture 2 now this is gonna be a, a ripped paper texture that I downloaded off the internet all you're gonna need to do is change this to darker color again so as you can see it's getting a similar effect to the last one just making the paper on the text look really rough and re ready so that's good now the next thing we're gonna do is add a circle directly in the middle of the design so all you need to do is Go to your shapes tool, select an ellipse, and now you can just drag a circle. It doesn't need to be too big. Make sure it's uh, center in the design, like so. That's pretty good. Now, it doesn't need to be dead center. Somewhere about there is good. That's about, that's about correct. What we're gonna do is change this to a red color. Now, you can sort of pick this. It doesn't really matter too much, but you wanna make sure that it's visible. So what I'm gonna do is add a drop shadow to this because then it makes an outline, so it makes it look a bit easier to see. And what you're gonna need to do is rasterize this layer as well. So now we've got our circle. What we need to do is add some texture to it, but also we need to add the Firmino image to it. So I'm gonna get the texture and the imagery and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so you're gonna to wanna to pick a pale red color. I've got my textures and then you're just gonna basically get texture free and change it to the divide texture. And then you're just gonna clipping mask it to the circle like so, pretty simple. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is get the grunge texture and the burnt paper texture. Now what you're gonna do is just overlay them over the whole image like I'm doing right now uh, and change it to subtract if it's too strong reduce it down so once you've got your grunge texture and change it to subtract make sure the opacity isn't too strong for the design but make sure it's good enough so it has a grungy effect then get your burnt paper texture 
and then overlay this over the whole design again. Change this to darker color, and then it adds this nice little yellowy tinge over the text, as you can see. So as you can see, it's all sort of coming together now. So it's all looking pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is get the Firmino images and then a camera or filter and we'll be done. So let's get straight into that. Okay guys, so I've got my two Firmino images. So he's right here and I've got him there. Right, so what you need to do is position Firmino where you see fit. Now I'm gonna have him about somewhere about there just so it layer masks him out. So what you need to do is position him center in the circle and then make sure you load your selection. So this is why you rasterize the circle. So uh, basically what we need to do is load the circle as a selection. Now I'm just gonna rasterize it real quick and then I'm going to go and load a selection of the circle like so. There we go. And what we need to do is just layer mask out the Firmino. And as you can see, he's lost his head. But what we're gonna do is just paint him back in. So there you go. That's all you need to do for that. Uh, and what we're gonna do now is make sure he's got a drop shadow added. And then we're just gonna go Command J. And then we're gonna go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And then leave it at 10 points. Now this is a very important piece because it makes all the, the shading and stuff more defined. So if you click OK, and what you're gonna do is go to your blending options and click Overlay. Now it just makes the image look a bit higher quality. Now we're gonna do the same again with the running image. Now you wanna position this in the center like so, about there, and you wanna give him a shadow obviously. Now I'm just gonna group that first image together. Circle for Mino, there we go. Now I'm just gonna go Command J again and do the high pass really quickly. So filter, other, high pass, then 10, point, 10 pixels, okay, and then I'm just gonna overlay this to him. Now it looks better. And then I'm just gonna quickly create a new layer underneath his feet and make a drop shadow. So all we need to do is get our brush, make it quite thin, uh, make sure we got our black color selected, and then we're just gonna paint in a shadow of where he would be standing, something like that. Change this to multiply, reduce the opacity down to about 70%. There we go, maybe move it up a bit. There we go, looks like he's standing on something. Basically guys, that's pretty much it for the poster design. So if I um, prepare this for camera or filter, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so what you need to do is just uh, unlock your background layer, group it all together, and then go Command, Shift, Option, E, and then you get a snapshot of it. And then what you're gonna do is go to uh, filter, camera or filter, and there we go, when it loads up eventually. And then you're gonna get your side-by-side -side image. And then we're gonna go to basic, probably reduce the blues down a bit, increase the pinks, increase exposure a little bit, and then whack contrast up. We want the contrast up, definitely. Highlights, you can have a little bit of that. Shadows, a bit of that. Don't want too much highlights because obviously you'll lose a bit of the um, texture on his face. Bring the texture up, definitely. Clarity, you want you want quite a bit of that. And then vibrance, definitely. And then saturation as well. Now, as you can see, already we've transformed the design. So this is just with a few little edits. And then we're just gonna bring some of the shadowing up and down just to play around with it. Sharpening, definitely want to use that tool because it's very, very good for the images. Then we can get the color mixing going. Now you can change the reds if you feel you need to. Uh, also the oranges you can bring out a little bit more and the blues. So something like that looks pretty good to me. Next thing I'm gonna do is color grading. Now I'm just gonna change some of the shadows. Now this is actually a new tool that they've added in which is really good. So you can increase how much of a certain color you want in the design. Um, if you want reds in the shadows then you can use that and then in the highlights as well. So something like that looks really good. Um, now you can reduce the blending of this or you can increase it so it's pretty pretty easy to use. And then we're going to go down to effects, add a grain, about 30, and then a vignette in the corners, something like that. And then that's pretty much it guys. So as you can see, we've changed it from that to this. Looks really cool. I think that looks pretty good if I'm if I'm honest. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite pieces that I've done so far. Uh, it's got all the texture and the imagery behind it and it just looks really cool. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope I have uh, taught you something today and I hope you've learned um, lots of new skills. If you have, leave a like, comment and subscribe. There'll be more videos coming out over Christmas time and uh, everything. Uh, hopefully, this might this might come out on Christmas or it might come out a few days before. Uh, I hope you guys have a, a very Merry Christmas and I hope you've enjoyed the videos this year. Um, I'll be keeping out next year, so make sure to stick around, follow the Instagram, follow the Twitter, uh, and yeah, just stay in touch. Message me if you want certain tutorials or anything like that and I'll get straight back to you. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.